hello now we'll discuss regarding the multiple threaded screw now in the previous lecture we had discussed regarding the various forms of the thread types of thread then single start thread then we had uh, discussed regarding the various definitions of the uh, that is the pitch major diameter minor diameter pitch circle diameter and various definitions basic fundamental definition that we have discussed now here we will discuss that is a multiple threaded screw now the lead of the screw will be calculated as lead is equal to number of start into pitch now if number of starts are more than one then suppose number of starts are equal to n then lead will be equal to n times of pitch now what is this n that is the number of starts okay in single start thread this number of starts are equal to 1 if this number of starts are more then it will be a multiple threaded screw now many times it is necessary to go for a higher advancement of the screw now to adopt this we are going to increase the lead angle or the lead of the power screw but to increase this lead angle as this lead angle or the lead will increase then pitch will also increase we if with the increasing in pitch the core diameter root diameter or minor diameter will decrease as this core diameter root diameter or minor diameter will decrease the strength of the screw will decrease Therefore, the large lead angle increases the efficiency of the screw by compromising the strength of the uh, screw power screw. Now, as this will decrease in single start thread, to avoid this decreasing in strength, we'll go for a multiple threaded screw. Then next one, the large axial movement can be obtained in one direction with the uh, multiple threaded screw. Now, in single threaded screw, the pitch or lead increases, the depth of the screw thread also increases, therefore decreasing the core diameter, the weaken the screw as we have discussed. Now, they will see the different types of screw threads are there this is a red one it is a single start double start and it is a triple start is there now triple start means in one axial movement that is a three times of pitch movement will be there in the axial direction is there now what are the advantages of the are there of such type of multiple threaded screw that is, it provides the large axial motion per revolution of the screw this increase the traveling speed of the sliding member for double start screw the traveling speed will be the twice of the single start thread for triple threaded it will be the three times of the uh, single start thread will be there then efficiency of the multiple threaded screw is more than the single threaded screw due to increase in the helix angle okay there are some disadvantages are there first disadvantage is there that is the mechanical advantages obtained with the multiple threaded screw is lower than compared to the single threaded screw therefore effort required will be more compared to the single threaded screw then it will lose the property of the self locking okay this is the self locking is the condition where it requires certain torque to lower the load in the descending operation in the direction of load then there are different applications are there like uh, in fountain pen then sluice gate speed actuator and mechanical presses where we are going to use the multiple thread screw now we'll see the force analysis of the square thread now let us see this is the schematic layout of the square thread this is a core diameter or minor diameter mean diameter or pitch circle diameter and d is nothing but our major diameter now this is a right handed thread is there because the inclination is towards the left therefore it will be called as a right handed thread now this is a diagram force diagram where we are going to unwound the 
thread this is the angle of alpha that is the helix angle as it is being unwounded the length will be pi dm and this is the lead is there now we are going to apply the force at this location therefore torque developed on the shaft or power screw will be p into dm divided by 2 uh, the uh, torque analysis uh, will help uh, for the evaluation of various types of forces now let us see uh, now th this is this is the example for the right handed thread and this is the example for the left handed thread now right handed thread how to identify that can be identified by using a right hand thumb rule now if you have wounded your hand okay and uh, in this way and thumb what are the direction of thumb is there this wounding direction is the rotation of a screw and uh, uh, the thumb will show the direction of advancement of the screw now if you have wounded in the anti-clockwise direction and if screw advances in upward direction then, then that will be a right hand thread otherwise it is a left hand thread another way to identify is if this inclination is towards left then it is a right hand thread if inclination is towards right then we can say it is a left hand thread now let us see now see basic definitions for that d is generally denoted as a nominal or outer diameter or major diameter dc is generally considered as a core diameter inner diameter or minor diameter and dm is taken as a mean diameter dm is equal to d plus dc by 2 then alpha is a helix angle or uh, lambda is a helix angle or lead angle then tan alpha is equal to the tan lambda is equal to lead divided by pi dm lead is equal to the number of starts into the pitch then uh, mu is equal to the coefficient of friction and phi is nothing but our thread friction now therefore the force analysis uh, of the screw thread can be done by using a two different ways first one that is the raising the load that is screw advancement against the direction of load and second one lowering the load the screw advancement in the direction of load raising means against the direction of load and lowering means in the direction of load now let us see that is the first case that is the lifting of the load that is the screw advancement against the direction of load now if suppose w is the load which is applicable on the power screw p is the force which is being applied on the screw okay at the mean diameter dm n is the normal reaction that is being created then mu n is the friction force is there alpha is the lead angle or helix angle pi dm is our circumference and l is nothing but our lead is there then we'll do the summation of forces in x direction and summation of forces in y direction for the equilibrium now for the equilibrium of horizontal forces summation of forces in x direction will get the equation that is p is equal to mu n cos alpha mu n cos alpha plus n sin alpha plus n sin alpha then summation of forces in y direction vertical direction you will get w is equal to n cos alpha minus mu n sin alpha now dividing equation 1 by equation 2 will get the uh, ratio that is p divided by w is equal to mu n cos alpha plus n sin alpha divided by n cos alpha minus mu n sin alpha now taking common n as a common uh, it will be vanish from the numerator as well as the denominator take this n common therefore you will get the equation that is the p is equal to w into mu cos alpha plus sin alpha divided by cos alpha minus mu sin alpha now take a common that is sin alpha as a common ratio therefore what you will get that is p is equal to w into mu plus sin alpha divided by cos alpha is equal to tan alpha therefore mu plus tan alpha divided by 1 minus mu tan alpha now as you know mu is a coefficient of friction generally it is being taken as mu is equal to tan phi therefore substituting value of mu is equal to tan phi in the equation you will get the equation that is p is equal to w into tan phi plus tan alpha divided by 1 minus 
tan phi into tan alpha. Now by using a mathematical expression, you will get P is equal to W into tan of phi plus alpha. Now this is the entire equation for the force P which is being applicable for the screw movement against the direction of load. Then from this we can calculate the torque required to raise the load that is T is equal to P into dm divided by 2 therefore W into tan of 5 plus alpha divided by 2 this is the torque required to raise the load. Then second case see this previous one that is the torque required to raise the load that is W into W by 2 into tan of phi plus alpha. Phi is the friction angle and alpha is the lead angle. Then second case is there that is the movement of the screw uh, in the direction of load that is for lowering of the load that is the movement of the screw in the direction of load. Now let us see this diagram that is the movement of the screw in the direction of load therefore friction uh, force will get changed direction of friction force and this force will get changed. Then again the equilibrium for the x direction and again the equilibrium for the y direction. Now for the summation of forces in x direction you will get the equation that is the P is equal to mu n cos alpha plus, uh, plus sorry minus n sin alpha minus n sin alpha this direction is towards this then summation of forces in y direction vertical direction that is w is equal to mu n cos alpha sin alpha plus n cos alpha is there okay then uh, take the ratio and we will get the equation that is the p into w mu cos alpha minus sin alpha divided by mu sin alpha plus cos alpha take a common as a cos alpha is a common factor you will get the equation that is w into mu tan alpha minus divided by mu tan alpha plus 1 now we know mu is equal to tan phi therefore mu uh, w into tan phi minus tan alpha divided by 1 plus tan phi into tan alpha by using mathematical expression we will get uh, the p into w into tan of phi minus alpha this is for a lowering of the load for raising of the load we got the equation p into w into tan of phi plus alpha this is for lowering of the load then torque you will get that is the t is equal to p into dm by 2 therefore final torque equation for the lowering of the load is equal to w into dm divided by 2 into tan of phi minus alpha tan of phi minus alpha for the lowering of the load is there now there are two equations are there that is the first one first equation for the lifting of the load that is t is equal to w into tan of phi plus alpha divided by 2 and for the lowering of the load you will get the equation w t is equal to w into dm divided by 2 into tan of phi minus alpha then next one we'll see the next concept that is overhauling of the screw now if phi is less than alpha the torque required to lower the load is negative see this previous equation the tan w into dm divided by 2 into tan of phi minus alpha if phi is less than alpha tan alpha will be negative then torque required will be negative that means no torque is required therefore the load is negative that is the load to will start moving downward without application of the torque such a situation is to be avoided such a situation is called as a overhauling condition therefore phi always should be greater than alpha that situation is called as the self locking of the screw if phi is greater than alpha the positive torque will be required to lower the load therefore as phi is greater than alpha therefore taking a tan on both side tan phi is greater than tan alpha therefore tan phi is equal to mu mu is greater than lead divided by pi dm this is the condition for the self locking of the screw sometimes a short notes are being asked on the overhauling of the screw and self locking of the screw then we'll see how to evaluate the screw efficiency now the efficiency is generally calculated as efficiency is equal to output divided by input that is wl divided by pi into dm into p that is input is there therefore w by p 
into lead divided by pi dm that is equal to tan alpha therefore w by p into tan alpha is equal to efficiency now we know that is the value of p is equal to that is w into tan of pi plus alpha okay therefore we'll get the equation uh, uh, efficiency eta is equal to tan alpha divided by tan of phi plus alpha but this efficiency does not consider the collar friction without collar you cannot support the screw okay now this is entirely regarding the um, uh, force analysis of the square thread thank you